difference. Well, you know, you see a movie once. Oh, I saw it a few times. Oh, ten years ago. No, I saw it again just last month. Oh, on television. No, I saw it in a huge revival. Fame can be a fickle friend, and for many 80s stars, the bright lights eventually dimmed. We'll revisit the careers of some of the most prominent 80s stars who fell off the map, and explore the circumstances that led to their disappearance from the limelight. Who was your favorite 80s star? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Jeff Cohen. Hey kid, I want you to spill your guts, tell us everything. 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 Okay, I'll talk. Everyone remembers the cowardly but heroic chunk from the coming-of-age classic The Goonies. But you might not know that Jeff Cohen also had a fairly prolific TV career in the 80s, with roles in several TV movies and appearances in multiple episodes of hit sitcoms. It's great to see you guys. Yeah, always a major joy. Later in life, he became interested in the business side of Hollywood and went on to take up a career in law, even co-founding his own firm. While he's moved away from the spotlight, he's very much still involved in the entertainment industry. In fact, he represented his Goonies co-star Ki Hui Kwan in negotiating Kwan's contract for his Oscar-winning role in Everything Everywhere All at Once. He also shared a video of the pair hugging on his Instagram story where Jeff was captured telling Ki how proud he was of him. Oh, I love you, but I'm so proud of you. Oh, my God. Number 9, Katherine Bach. Becoming a famous actor is one thing, but getting an item of clothing named after you is a whole other level of icon status. It's a birthday, you know. Oh, it is? Happy birthday, Daisy. Why, thank you, Venus. When Bach was first cast in The Dukes of Hazard, the producers had a more old-fashioned wardrobe in mind for her character. But Bach talked them into letting her wear her own clothes, and thus was born the famous shorts that would come to be known as Daisy Dukes. You know, if we weren't cousins, I'd marry you. This yeah, never huh? stopped anyone in this family before. You got a point there. In addition to reprising her role in the Dukes animated series in a pair of Dukes reunion specials, Bach played recurring characters on several other shows, most notably The Young and the Restless. She also appeared in over a dozen small films, but hasn't had an acting credit since 2016. You, is it a, a fashion line you've got? Yes, I'm, I got a collection of denim jeans and shorts. And <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Number eight, Mia Sara. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is one of those 80s movies that everyone has to see at some point. And Mia Sara Sloan was part of the teen trio that made it so great. What do you think Ferris is gonna do? Be a Sarah has been all over our screens in the years since, with plenty of TV appearances as well as roles in both big budget flicks and smaller films. Her final feature appearance came in 2012's Dorothy and the Witches of Oz as the evil Princess Languideer who can swap her head out at will. Who are you? And how did you get into my house? I teleported, of course. Took a little sip of puff puff juice and bing. Since then, Sarah has retired from acting and become a prolific writer, focusing mainly on poetry. But she did reunite with her Ferris Bueller co-stars to share memories in 2020. Mia, I saw you on the street in uh, Soho like a million years ago. And you hid in a, in a drawing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Number seven, Michael Sheffling. It's hard to follow up a breakout performance in such a beloved classic as Sixteen Candles. What are you doing here? I heard you were here. You came here for me? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Sheffling started his career as a model, and his part as Sam's love interest in the teen rom-com was his first screen role. After that, he appeared in a string of movies throughout the 80s and into the early 90s, some more successful than others, before quitting acting to, believe it or not, make furniture. God strike me down, that's almost as good as a manger. Give me strength not to sit on his lap. Despite the plethora of Jake Ryan fans apparently still pining for him, Shuffling has had better luck staying out of the spotlight than most former stars. Aside from the odd appearance on his daughter's Instagram feed, he's pretty much disappeared from the public eye. Sunday's my day off. Sometimes I go fishing. Number six, Kirk Cameron. You know how they always say that despite all the hardships of teaching, there are those rare moments that make it all worthwhile? Yes. 
This one's for you. If you're deep into the faith-based film scene, Cameron probably hasn't fallen off your map, though he no longer spends much time in the mainstream public eye. During his turn as Mike Seaver on the hit sitcom Growing Pains, Cameron first became a teen heartthrob, then born-again Christian. He's been totally devoted to his religion ever since, appearing almost exclusively in faith-based productions, though he did make a cameo in his sister's sitcom Fuller House in 2019. Sweet, jeez, why is my Kirk Cameron poster walking? <laughs> I, I get that a lot. He's also starred in and produced a number of Christian films and documentaries over the last two decades the most popular of which is his role in the first three Left Behind movies, based on the popular novel. Cameron even hosts his own Christian talk show on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. I want to honor God in my family, and I want to hear well done at the end of the, yeah. end of the race. Number five, Kelly McGillis. You always get what you want? No, not always. Yeah, maybe. Like most of the celebs on our list, McGillis's biggest role came early in her career. This was when she starred opposite Tom Cruise as Charlotte Charlie Blackwood in the mega blockbuster Top Gun. I see some real genius in your flying Maverick, but I can't say that in there. I was afraid that everyone in that tax trailer would see right through me, and I just don't want anyone to know that I've fallen for you. Unlike many others on our list, McGillis has actually been working pretty steadily ever since. Although she took a short break from acting in the early 2000s, between the late 80s and the 2020s, she's had dozens of roles in small films and TV movies. She also appeared in a handful of TV episodes, including in some fairly major series like The Outer Limits and The L Word. She's even performed on stage, most notably playing Mrs. Robinson in a 2004 tour of The Graduate. Seems to me you've got it all figured out. Yeah. If you did forget the wine. Number four, Jamie Gertz. Don't go away, Carolyn, baby. <laughs> Another 16 Candles alum. Gertz was in high demand throughout the 1980s, with major roles in movies like The Lost Boys and Less Than Zero, as well as series like Square Pegs. Gertz was all over our screens. Well, if you think that you can improve on that, there will be a box with a slot in it in the student pep room. Her busy schedule tapered off slightly in the 90s when she took on fewer film roles and most of her TV appearances were guest parts. Starting in the 2000s, she pivoted almost entirely to TV, with major roles in Still Standing and The Neighbors. However, since 2015, sports fans might best know her as co-owner of the Atlanta Hawks with her husband, Tony Ressler. I think it's very exciting. It's like that last bastion of something that we don't know the outcome. Number three, Jennifer Grey. After the surprise success of Dirty Dancing, we might have expected Jennifer Grey to become the next big Hollywood star, but her popularity took a downturn in the 90s. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Concerned that her appearance would prevent her from getting roles, she had rhinoplasty and ended up looking so different that even close friends didn't recognize her. Nose job! <laughs> oh. Just one? Gray persevered despite the negative effects on her career and landed a number of smaller parts over the next two decades, as well as a starring role on a short-lived sitcom where she played herself. In 2010, she put her dancing talents to the test again on Dancing with the Stars and won the competition with her partner, Derek Huff. I don't know what you do. Number two, Rick Moranis. If you were a kid in the 80s, you definitely knew Rick Moranis. He appeared in some of the most beloved comedies of the decade. You know, Mr. Tully, you are a most fortunate individual. I know. You have been a participant in the biggest interdimensional cross rip since the Tunguska Blast of 1909. Felt great. Everyone remembers Lewis from Ghostbusters, who might have been a bit of a nerd, but actually looks like a blast to hang out with. And of course, who could forget Lord Dark Helmet? I am your father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! Which is what you are about to become. Sadly, Moranis' wife tragically passed away from cancer in 1991, and over the next decade, the actor began to step away from Hollywood to focus on parenting his two children. Aside from a few TV appearances and voice gigs, he's largely been away from acting, 
though he's slated to reprise his role as Wayne Zielinski in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids franchise. It works. The machine works. Do the kids know? Well, yeah, the kids know. Number one, Phoebe Cates. If you only knew her from one scene, we bet we can guess which one it is. It has to be one of the most replayed moments in movie history, and it arguably catapulted Kate's to superstardom. Uh, you gotta get used to working the holidays. People are always screaming and yelling. Over the next decade, the young actor averaged more than one movie a year, and there's no reason to think she couldn't have continued appearing on screen as much as she wanted. Instead, after starring alongside her husband Kevin Kline in 1994's Princess Caribou, Kate's elected to press pause on her Hollywood career and focus on her kids. Since then, she's started her own New York City boutique. What's that? Oh, funny you should ask. I think this would be perfect for her. This is the perfect husband bracelet. Kate's returned to acting just once in 2001's The Anniversary Party, directed by her Fast Times co-star, Jennifer Jason Lee. Who is looking for something else, something more intoxicating. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.